last night as the Whitby Warriors opened their OLA Junior A Lacrosse regular season against Toronto Beaches. The Warriors open the scoring when Marty O'Brien makes a nice move inside to make it one zip. Whitby extends their lead as Zach Aiken takes a long pass and goes over the shoulder of Keith Kaikot to put the home side up by two. Then it's Casey Dupont on the doorstep. The Warriors went up by three, just 242 in. Whitby goes up by four off the stick of Aiken on his second of the game. The home side continues to press and Paul Sally goes over the shoulder of Kaycott to make it 5-0. Whitby made it 6-zip before Neil Maynard scored shorthanded past John McLennan to put the home side up 7-0. Toronto finally gets on the scoreboard when Bob McBride takes a long feed and beats Scott Wiley to make it 7-1. This game was all Whitby though, as the Warriors open with a 17-8 win over Toronto Beaches. Next action for the Warriors is a home and home series beginning Friday in Burlington. The Warriors host the back end Tuesday night back at Iroquois Park. In other sports notes tonight, the Clarington Green Gales are back in action Saturday. Well, with the decks and all. Yeah, I always figured Maj would be a dime. Came from. To the third, tied at five and Prout delivers on the promise for a 6-5 Whitby lead. It's 7-all when Mike Morrison tiptoes the crease and scores for an 8-7 Warriors lead. Then it's Steve Wojtuk burying an insurance marker and he goes to the crowd as it was time to celebrate. The Warriors win the Ontario Junior A title and advance to the 1999 Minto Cup Canadian Championship. You got one step up for the Minto Cup and it's uh, once you win that, like we did in 97, it's the, the most unbelievable feeling you'll ever witness. I noticed you guys left that Ontario trophy there. I guess a sign that uh, really there is one more to go. Definitely. You can't get your heads too big by running around here. Um, we made our first step, and there's uh, plenty more steps where that came from. And Tyler, you, we talked to you when you came to the team. Obviously, this is what you wanted, I'm sure. Oh, this is a dream come true. I, five years ago, or two years ago, whatever, I would never, ever believe that this could be happening to me. It's. Uh, I was very fortunate. Was this is just a step towards what we really want. That trophy we took a look at, and uh, but our, our real goal is the Minto Cup. Definitely quite a scene last night in Whitby. The Minto Cup opened Saturday the 28th at Iroquois Park versus either Victoria or Burnaby, B.C. One other sports note before we leave Milton here tonight, and that's the Brooklyn Redmen looking to stave off elimination, trailing the major series semifinal against Brampton three games to one. Face-off time tonight at Iroquois is 8.30. And Dan, that's going to do it from here in Milton, where the Green Gals opened up the 1999 Founders Cup Canadian Junior B Lacrosse Championship. We'll be here tomorrow, this time from Acton, actually, where the Green Gals kick. I'll keep my cable. Cable TV, the best value in home entertainment. parties in the Ontario Lacrosse Association and we here in the Durham region remain very concerned as all three of our local area teams are still in contention. Last night the Whitby Warriors were in action in the Ontario Championship up three games to none over the Six Nations Arrows. They would look to wrap it up with a victory in front of the hometown fans. We'll take you to Iroquois Park in Whitby where G Nash was in goal and as you know G stands for goals against average of nothing. Nada. Zip. And in the first period he shows why a nice spin shot by the Arrows but salaming the door is the guy they call Nash. Great save by the goaltender. Warriors down by a goal, 4-3 in the second when Six Nations adds to it. A great job to go up and get this ball. No chance for the goaltender, and Whippy was behind by two. The arrow's not wanting to leave the playoffs just yet. Back come the Warriors. Gavin Prout takes a lead pass in on goal and puts it over the keeper, and as he celebrates Whippy's fourth goal with his teammates, the arrow's goaltender is none too happy about it. The two had been at each other all the live long night, but this time the guy in black and orange doesn't want Prout scoring on him. Overcomes Gavin to discuss the situation. I think he was wishing him with the entire Six Nations team good luck on the golf course later this week. On to the third and tied up five. Gavin Prout working again. He gets a nice pick and finds himself in on goal. Scoring the go-ahead goal. New goalie for the Arrows, but Prout gives him a shot and he's knocked to the floor. Both players are down like they've been shot. That would attract a crowd. Eventually, cooler heads prevail. Everybody lives. The Arrows get one back, moving the ball well. This shot is placed perfectly on G. Nash going into the low corner. That would tie the game at six goals each. We were in for a finish tied at six. Here comes the offense. It's Zach Aitken putting the Warriors ahead. This guy has come on lately, and the guy with the megaphone says, that was beautiful, Warriors. Beautiful. Arrows would tie it again, though. 
So Whitby responds. Mike Morrison with a huge goal here. Everybody's pitching in on this night at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively, and that's what you need to win a championship. Guess who scores the insurance marker? Oh, yeah, number 21 with the moves to get there and beat the goaltender and check out the celebration. I feel like I'm at Lambeau for the Super Bowl. Steve Wojtek putting the Warriors up by two with time running out. And, folks, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. With just seconds left on the clock, G. Nash has the ball and will hold it to end the game. The Whitby Warriors are Ontario championships. It didn't even bother me that that lady's head was in my shot. Whitby is one step closer to the Minto Cups. And, folks, take a listen to what pure joy sounds like. Oh yeah, the final score, 9-7. to seven. The Warriors one step closer to fulfilling the dream of winning the Cup for their former coach, the late Jim Bishop. After the game playoff, MVP Gavin Prout talked about his team's effort in game number five. Um, it was a total team effort, most likely. We had some big goals for some, uh, some key players. Uh, Mike Morrison's goal at the end was definitely a big one. And then to uh, top it all off, Zach Aikens, as well as the rest of the boys. Uh, that, uh, once again, total team effort. Uh, great game from our goalie once again. And... Uh, He's definitely the co-MVP in my time. Uh, I thought we played great. Again, I thought it was the defense that won it for us. We played great tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to the next series. You put in the insurance markets tonight, and you were pretty pumped up that I had to feel good at that point of the game. Well, I mean, it felt good for me to do it, but whoever does it, it's a team. Whoever does whatever job they need to do out there, we all give them a pat on the back, and I got it, so I just went a little extra nuts. Well, it was an extremely difficult game, and uh, you know, it took us right to the very end to win it. It's like the regular season game up here against them when we won by two goals and scored in the last minute. We did a little bit earlier tonight, but big goal by Morrison near the end there, and then Wojciech got the one to clinch it, and we just kind of hung on for the last minute or so there. But uh, great, great comeback by our guys. They hung in there and we got behind pretty much all night and then came back and, and pulled out the win. Three captains were presented with the championship trophy. They have offered you to run around with it. You guys sort of picked it up and put it down. Does that suggest that you're setting your sights on something else? Most definitely. This is a, this is a big trophy, but uh, there are definitely more uh, larger fish in the sea to, uh, to catch. And uh, the Minto Cup is uh, the focus of the team right now. The Ontario Championships is definitely nice, but uh, there's more steps uh, where that came from. Oh, yeah. We want that next one. We've got four more to go, and we want to... Uh we want to win the Minnow Cup now. That's what we've been working for all year, and we've got there, so we don't intend to give it up without a, a battle. Whoever comes down, whether it's Burnaby or whether it's Victoria, they're, they're going to have a battle on their hands. All right, enjoy tonight, and good luck in the big one. Thank you very much. We are going to enjoy tonight. And so the Warriors are Ontario champs, but as you heard, their sights are set now on a larger goal, the Minto Cup, which will be hosted by the East and, of course, the Warriors. It'll be either Burnaby or Victoria coming to town. The big Best of Seven series is set to begin on Saturday, August the 28th. On now to the Junior B Division and the Clarence. Laurie, thanks very much. Here we are, another week, another run at a championship for a Durham area team. Two of them, actually, starting with the Whitby Warriors, who kicked off the Minto Cup final series on the weekend versus the Burnaby Lakers. Game one was played on Saturday night at the Iroquois Sports Center with much anticipation as the national title would be decided right here in Durham. On the floor in game one, the Warriors coasted to a 14-5 victory in front of 1,550 fans. A great showing for the home team. The Lakers vowed to be better prepared for game two, and the Warriors, Warriors conceded that they probably would be, making for a very exciting return engagement. No more talk. To Iroquois we go, and game two. G Nash in goal, and as you know by now, G stands for Gadzooks. Not only does he keep stoning us, he burns us for six assists in game one. Guess what? In this match, the Lakers would strike first. It's Ryan O'Connor with a low shot that gets through the traffic and the goaltender. 1-0 Burnaby in the early going. They go up 2-0 before Whitby responds. Marty O'Brien waiting patiently on the stoop. He gets the pass and buries it before he pays the price. A lumber lashing, so to speak, at the hands of the frustrated defender. Marty says, I just want to get up. Some pushing and shoving ensues, and... Guess what? Cooler heads prevail. 11 minutes into the first, a delay of sorts. The celebration of the O'Brien goal gets out of hand and a broken pane of glass is the result. Over to the scene comes the official glass inspector who delivers the verdict. Yeah, it's broken, all right. That caused a 10-minute delay back to the game. Here's why Gavin Prout led the league in scoring this year. This is what we call shaking and bacon all the way to the net where he beats the goalie with a behind-the-back shot. Have mercy, Gavin. That isn't even fair. Warriors tied the game at 2 on that play. Tied at 3 in the second. Mike Morrison shows some great speed to get through everybody en route to the goal. He scores to give the Warriors the lead. The score at that point of the period 
was 4-3. Up 5-3, now the Lakers pull it within one. It's Matt Brown on the near side with a well-placed shot that beats G. Nash. They're pumped about that one. The score was 5-4. Whippy pulls their goalie with seconds left in the period and possession, but they cough it up. Look at the chance for Burnaby to tie it, but Andy Turner finds a way to miss the yawning cage. He wasn't happy about that. It was 5-4 Whippy going into the second intermission. On to the third, Steve Wojcik with the ball using Proud as a decoy. He puts it down. The Warriors go up 6-4 on the nice play by Wojcik. It unraveled for Burnaby. From that point on, here they come again. Suddens with the ball gives to Zach Aitken, who goes top shelf where they score the pretty goals. This team was very happy, leading by a score of 9-4 to on the strength of that one. And speaking of that goal, it would spell the end for Ryan Phillips, who couldn't even be blamed in to try and stop the bleeding with Stuart McDonald. Don't think it helped. Tyler Francie under pressure does well to get the ball in front to Suddens. He makes no mistake. That goal made the score 10-4. to The Warriors lead safe and sound. The Lakers did put one more goal on the board. It's Ryan O'Connor with his third of the game. Unfortunately for the Lakers fans, it was far too little too late. Other side of the coin, the the score was very much to the delight of the knee-slapping Warriors fans who had to be happy with the outcome of the first two games. The final score in this one, 10-5 in favor of the hometown Warriors. Top scorers for Whippy, Gavin Prout and Derek Suddens with three points each. Marty O'Brien chipped in with a two-goal performance and after the game, Coach Bob Hanna had this to say. Well, we were a little sluggish to start the game in uh, the first period and we had down the two, but then we, uh, we got going up pretty good in the second and the third. I, I thought we, we played really well. We were we were dominating in uh, in shooting and and in draws and loose balls. We just weren't putting the ball down for a while, and we seemed to be, as I said before, sluggish. But we did finally get going, and and it turned out all right for us. Last night we didn't play well. We know that uh, they played very well. They beat us, uh, and that's great. We came out tonight with some good intensity. Our scorers got to score. We had great chances. Uh, we could have had the lead well going into the third period. Uh, we had a bad five minutes in the first uh, of the third, but our intensity's there, and, and we'll be uh, we prepared well for tonight, and we'll be better prepared for Tuesday. Obviously, discipline a big part of these things. Uh, how did you like your team's composure tonight when it got chippy? Uh, I thought it, I pretty good, really. The guys stayed out, and that's what we're telling them. Just walk away from it and let them take the penalties, and the, their kids are doing a pretty good job on that. First period, Gavin Prout took a couple. Does it concern you at all when a guy that's that valuable takes a couple of penalties? It does, and Gavin and I talked about that at the end of the period, and, and uh, we know that, you know, we know they're going to go after Gavin, and uh, so he has to just back away from it and can't get involved, or otherwise they're going to they're gonna try and get him out of there, obviously. Yeah, we played him uh, in 97. I think they got a good look at uh, how our team plays. Um, I've been known to be a little bit of a, a hothead sometimes, and uh, I get the emotion of the game going. Um, Unfortunately, you know, I can get a penalty once in a while, but uh, I figure, you know, they are focusing on me, but that just gives players uh, that have just as much talent more room to work with themselves. How are the spirits now? How are you going to game three down 2-0? Well, we're prepared. The kids have already gone for a jog after the game. They're being fed. We're prepared. Uh, we'll have a day off tomorrow. We'll be ready to go. They're, they're fine. We, uh, Whitby was down 2-0 to us last series when, and uh, came back. I think we'll do it uh, to them this time. All right then, the two teams will take a day off in preparation for game number three. Said game will be played on Tuesday night. The action gets underway at Iroquois Park at 8 p.m. Don't be one of those people who says, I should have gone to the national championships when they were in Whitby. Get out there and support your Warriors now. To baseball, the Oshawa League.